But that's not the most baffling thing about the show. That would have been Goldberg's new, apparently delusional character. <laughs> He's upset that Drew McIntyre, of all people, like, I'll just put it this way. Let's say that they had not had a problem with the timing. And Drew had been able to cut whatever promo that he was supposed to cut that Goldberg was supposed to get mad at. Okay? Fine. Whatever you want to do. But, like, if you're going to do that, why in the world do you do three hours of Randy Orton disrespecting all of the baby faces? Now Goldberg comes out and he's mad at Drew McIntyre, of all people, for being disrespectful to the legends when we've just watched three hours of Randy Orton doing that. So the character comes off as a delusional heel. I'm not sure if that's what they want out of Goldberg, but that's what I got out of it. And, and it's interesting because, in my opinion, heel Goldberg has never worked. Well, it has never worked. Ever. And not one time. But babyface Goldberg does and can. And I, I think this is where it'll be interesting how this works. It's like, I'm concerned, and hopefully they'll find a way to make it work, and maybe they will. But it's like, I think there's a definite chance that Drew versus Goldberg hurts both. Because... A, it was, you know, a complete change. It's like Goldberg. It's like, you don't have respect. And it's like, A, it's like everybody respects Drew. Like, everybody, like legitimately, everybody really likes and respects Drew. And I think most people know that. So it's like, okay, Goldberg, you're lying. And it's like Goldberg's whole existence, especially when he came back and was as at his most over, was that he was a guy that wanted to be a hero for the kids. And it's like, that was always the best Goldberg. And so I I don't get it. And like you say, it's also a case of he seems to be barking up the wrong tree in that Randy, who everyone knows is disrespectful and was many times on this show, it just seemed like an odd bone to pick and a person to pick it with that if you are going to this, I think you'd, I don't want to say almost, I think you would have been better off. If Drew, just after beating Keith Lee, just reaffirmed that I am a fighting champion and I will fight anyone and have Goldberg's music hit. And it's like, then at least Goldberg's not delusional. He's just a baby face that's willing to accept a challenge. Sure. Drew, is. Drew could say, who's next? It's easy. One line. Goldberg comes out, says, I'm next thing that i can understand and this seems to me like your typical antiquated thinking in 2021 i understand the old school idea that well we're paying him all of this money we've got to put him in a money position okay but bro we're in the middle of a pandemic they ain't selling one ticket to the royal rumble the royal rumble is on the wwe network why does goldberg need to always come back for a championship match because does anybody expect that he's going to beat Drew McIntyre? Oh, I hope not. Probably not. I mean, the plan at WrestleMania was he was going to lose to Roman Reigns. So is this going to be a deal where, like, every six months, Goldberg comes back and loses a title match because they're paying him so much money? You're paying him this money, and whether he's facing Drew McIntyre or somebody else on the Royal Rumble card, it's basically the same value. You're not going to sell any more tickets, whether he's in the main event or whether he's doing an opening match. I mean, how many people are going to buy the WWE Network if he's in a title match versus if he's not? I mean, it's negligible. So, to me, what I would like to see is you have somebody, just some mid-card heel. A Miz would be actually a perfect example. Miz has been so fucking annoying on television. <laughs> the money in the bank, the this, the that. He's so annoying. Okay? Well, you know what? It's been six months. Goldberg's heard enough of this fucker. And Goldberg shows up, and he wants a match with The Miz at the Royal Rumble. And you put him on the card, and it's two minutes, and Goldberg spears and jackhammers this fucking guy, and then he vanishes for six more months. In six more months, Bobby Roode has been really annoying. Bobby Roode has been bothering people. He's a mid-card guy. Who gives a shit? Goldberg shows up, two minutes, spear and jackhammer, and you send everybody home happy. To me, you're getting more value out of Goldberg that way then having Goldberg constantly show up, be in a world title match, lose, 
especially in this position where he's going to be a heel on top of everything else and lose. And then six months later, he comes back and he's going to face Roman and he's going to lose. What are we getting out of Goldberg there? I know people are going to say, oh, right, you can't have the old guy come in and beat the mid-card guy. Bro, yeah, you can. I'm not talking about a main eventer. I didn't say he should come in and beat Bray. Although, actually, I would be totally fine with that one at the Royal Rumble. But, like, you're, whoever your top guys are, your Keith Lees or whatever. I'm trying to think of any top guys. I'm just drawing well, a blank. Even, but you know what I mean. But even if he, if he is going to come in and lose, it's like, again, I think you could have. And I think it would work better. It's like, why not Lashley? Sure. Because Lashley has destroyed everybody and beat everybody. Bobby Lashley can do the disrespectful promo. You've got Bobby that does have a legit MMA background. Goldberg's got the, you know, pseudo MMA background. It's like, I think if you did, because the Haas fight works better, and I think Goldberg as the baby face, and that's where, too, with it being Legends Night, instead of having Randy bury everybody, you could have had, you know, Goldberg there and have... Bobby bow up on him with a, you know, you ain't shit old man or something. And then you could have given Goldberg the spot on, whether it be the go home show after some promos or whatever else, the spot where he actually spears Bobby and knocks Bobby out of his boots and stands tall doing his snarly bit before the pay-per-view. And then it's like, okay, if you're going to beat Goldberg, because I'm assuming they're going to with Drew, then you're beating him with a heel, which will get heat because he's beating the 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 legend. You could also work in something with the Hurt Business to protect the legend. And then again, it could elevate Bobby Lashley to that next level where, all right, he's going after the world title next. And then I think you get a bit more out of out of Goldberg. And again, by Goldberg being the one that stands up to the bully Bobby Lashley and you can use the numbers game of the hurt business to protect Goldberg a bit. I th I think that's a better win situation. But my my overall point Lance is you're right, but what I what I believe is if this guy is scheduled to do four matches a year, okay? Oh yeah, I'm fine. One of them. One of them he puts over a Lashley. The other three, he beats a Bobby Roode. He spears and jackhammers a Dolph Ziggler. He destroys a Miz. He smashes a John Morrison. These guys that you're not doing anything with anyway. So it doesn't matter. But what's Goldberg's aura at this point? He's a guy who now on TV they say is an old man. And he comes in and he loses. And he goes away for three months. And then he comes in and he loses. Goldberg needs an aura. You have no aura when all you do is come in and you lose. Yeah, I, th so, I think your your scenario, again, Miz would be good. But again, if he did the Bobby Roode or whoever you're not really using and won on the first one, he could then do the Bobby Lashley one and lose. Sure. And then post-match or the next night, you have the Miz being the Miz making fun of Goldberg, which then pulls that babyface legend away with, uh, yeah, I lost to Bobby Lashley. It's like, you know, a guy in his peak, but it's like, you, you mouthy little son of a bitch. It's like, you don't, you know, you've never earned the right to badmouth me. You're an axe. And then, like you say, you can have him spear and beat the Miz. And again, there'll be some fans that are, oh my God. They're, it's like, but Miz is, Miz is Teflon at this point in time. Miz is, whether you think he's at this level or you think he's not at just this that, level, he's not going to sell any tickets one way or the other. So no, it doesn't matter. But, I honestly believe you can't hurt the Miz. He is at a level that whatever you think of Miz at this moment right now, everyone listening to this show or watching Raw or SmackDown, whatever you think Miz is as a star, I firmly believe that that opinion can barely vary now because he's been around so long at that level and his heat currently is his level of annoyingness that that's always going to be there that him taking the bullet for whoever isn't really going to hurt him. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. 
Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.